presentation on the role of pharmacists in COVID-19 management. Now, Pharmacist Ahmed is a clinical pharmacist at Sahar Hospital. He got his M Pharm from the University of Strathclyde in 2006 and his MSc in clinical pharmacy from the same university in 2013. He is a member of the Antimicrobial Stewardship Program in Sahar Hospital and is working uh, in ICU, surgical wards, and pediatric wards and units as well. Now, before we begin, kindly mute your mic if it's unmuted during the presentation. And there will be a time for questions. So during the Q&A session, please type in the chat box if you are interested in raising any question. And now without any further ado, please welcome Pharmacist Ahmed Saabi. Pharmacist Ahmed, the stage is yours. Yeah. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, there we are here to share you with you some information regarding uh, COVID-19 management. As a role of the uh, Oman Pharmaceutical Society, I uh, would like to have some information and share it with our colleague as a pharmacist and healthcare provider. Uh, my presentation is going to be my presentation is going to be a uh, role of pharmacists in COVID-19 management, and uh, my outline is going to be introduction, guideline, uh, treating indication, and role of pharmacist. Uh, before we start, as introductions, what's COVID-19? Maybe a lot of you have heard about COVID-19. And here I'll give you some uh, brief uh, definition of COVID-19. It is a viral infection which appeared at the end of 2019 in city of Wuhan in China. Up to now, there are more, more than a million confirmed cases worldwide uh, of COVID-19 and a lot of uh, suspected cases. This, fire, this viral uh, affects the respiratory tract infection and can appear like a flu-like illness or can be like acute respiratory tract infection of lower side and it can be more aggressive and has uh, effect of, as multiple organ failure and can be lead to death in percentage of more than uh, two to three percent and sometimes to five percent in some countries. Everybody is, is suspected for this infection. But mostly it can, it can affect uh, the older age patients and the patients with uh, multi comorbidities. Uh, as I mentioned, this is viral disease, so that's why there should be a medication so which, can, which should be used to treat this uh, illness. As, as a pharmacist, we should have some information regarding this treatment and what option do we have worldwide? and how it is used and what information should every pharmacist knows about the medication, about the protocol and guideline which is available worldwide. That's why the aim of our lecture is to give information to our pharmacist, healthcare provider for the appropriate pharmacological management of suspected and confirmed cases in COVID-19. That by analyzing and uh, go through the available protocol and guideline worldwide. As, we, as I said, we have confirmed cases, the case which is confirmed by lab investigation, and, by, and we have suspected cases. What do we mean by suspected cases? Suspected cases are the cases who has a close contact with uh, uh, a confirmed cases within 14 days. And the cases who came from travel from the area where the disease was spreading uh, widely, and every patient came from a country had this disease, should be uh, known as a suspected cases, especially if it has any, any symptom like fever, acute respiratory tract infection like cough, sore throat, or any other uh, symptoms. Guideline. There are a lot of guidelines worldwide, and every country has a special guideline and protocol, and there's no only one protocol which is used for all the countries. So every country, by their own uh, expert and doctors and pharmacists, design their own, brot own protocol and guidelines as bear the condition and cases with them. But all the guidelines and protocol categorize the disease or the patient into four categories. Mild to moderate disease with group of no risk. And second category is mild to moderate in group with risk in risk group uh, and severe disease and critical disease. And the treatment in each country is dependent, as I said, as per the doctors and uh, the experts in that country, pharmacists and, and, uh, uh, and doctors. For example, if you can see uh, in the moderate to mild to moderate disease, in most of the 
European countries, they don't use any antiviral treatment in that in no risky group. Uh, but if, if, if in other country you can see they may use another uh, some antiviral. But here it is be clear in that moderate to uh, mild to moderate disease and risk group. In Italy, you can see that lubinavir and uh, chloroquine or hydrochloroquine can be used. But if you go to the uh, Switzerland, there is no antiviral. It is only chloroquine can be used for five days and so on. And the group of medications and the combinations depend on the severity of the disease. So more severe disease, more medication can be used. The same situation is here in Omani guideline as well. In Oman guideline, they divide the, the patient into two groups of patients. The patient with pneumonia plus uh, or without a DR, a, a ARB, which is acute respiratory tract disease, and other group is pneumonia with acute respiratory uh, disease. But this group is, can differentiate between all those groups with uh, the patient, is, it, is the patient G6BD deficiency or not? That's why. If the, if the patient came with pneumonia, but without ARD, and he is not G6BD. So the treatment will be chloroquine plus adithromycin. And if the patient is G6BD, the treatment will be hydroxychloroquine instead of chloroquine and plus adithromycin. But if the patient came with pneumonia and ARD, the, the treatment will, will be with, who is not G6BD will be chloroquine, adithromycin, and will add antiviral, which is uh, lubinavir, ritonavir. But if the patient is G6BD, the treatment will be hydroxychloroquine, azithromycin, lubinavir. So hydroxychloroquine is using with the patient with G6BD instead of chloroquine in Omani guideline. In some severe cases, we can use another antiviral, which is remdesivir, which is new medications, and babiviravir, if it is available. And sometimes in certain cases, we can use a corticosteroid like methylbrednisolone, 40 milligram IV twice daily for five days. So, as I mentioned, most of the guidelines uh, said that the, the, the medication, the group of medication which is used in treatment of COVID are pain management, treatment, antiviral, antimalarial, and antibacterial. We'll go through them one by one. First of all, uh, pain management. For pain management, some, uh, some uh, countries said we shouldn't use ibuprofen or non-steroid anti-inflammatory in treating or in controlling the pain in, in, in COVID-19. But this theory is not fully known or uh, confirmed. This appeared in France, and it is published in, uh, in, a, st in a study that, that said, which, that, that study was depend on empirical and empirical observation of the health provider. They said when, when the patient with COVID using ibuprofen, the disease was worsened. That was depend on a theory that non steroidal cannot be used with patients with asthma and respiratory tract uh, infection. But actually, none, uh, neither uh, WHO nor uh, European Medical Agency support that thing. And there's no strong and strong and solid evidence said this medication can be used, uh, cannot, cannot be used, because there's no strong study said. There's a side effect, another side effect can be with the patient with COVID-19. That's why uh, the WHO doesn't recommend avoiding ibuprofen from COVID-19 symptoms. Uh, also, the European Medical Agency said they are not aware of report of negative effect ibuprofen beyond a usual known side effect. But anyway, the WHO recommend that uh, uh, time being we can use uh, barostamol with these cases uh, uh, to, uh, to avoid any side, unknown side effect till we have further investigation and uh, studies. The main group of treatment is antiviral. We have various and multiple options of antiviral which is used in COVID-19, but most of them are under investigations and however, there are no data to support their use in COVID-19. First of all, first medication is Ozotamivir, which is known medication to all of you, I think, and it's used uh, for suspected cases. Because once the patient came to the ANE and casualty, they have uh, a symptom of, uh, yeah, of respiratory tract infection. So it could be uh, normal flu, which is seasonal flu, or it could be a CAB, which is community acquired pneumonia, and it could be COVID-19. That's why when the patient came to the ANE, 
the doctor start medication uh, for three, to uh, to rule out or to treat most uh, all this uh, illness. So he will give azotamivir to treat H1N1, and will give antibacterial to treat if this cap uh, pneumonia, and will use uh, hydroxychloroquine to treat if this COVID-19. All this will be used for three days or till that uh, result came out and confirmed which disease is it. Is it COVID, uh, uh, H1N1, or it is a bacterial infection? The second medication, which is new medication for all of us, which is remdesivir, which is antiviral. It is uh, uh, experimental and, and uh, under, under uh, investigation. It is new medication. It is used actually for Ebola. And it, is, it was trial in Wuhan and, uh, to treat COVID-19. This medication has in vitro activities against severe acute respiratory infection in COVID-19, uh, COVID but there's still no strong evidence said that this medication is, uh, the, is the one. But with vitro, and sometimes with some patient use uh, in China and US, showed some efficacy against COVID-19. This medication, as I said, this is an uh, investigational nucleide analog with broad spectrum antiviral activity. Uh, up to now, it's used only for a small number of patients. And as I said in the beginning, there's no strong evidence said this medication is the one which can treat uh, uh, COVID-19. And this medication, the company who, who produced this medication is Gilead Company, and still under investigation. So any patient or any doctor want to use this medication, the patient should be admitted in the hospital and should be registered because that patient will use as uh, uh, for data collection. So the, 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 the company used that, that patient, treated patient as a sample of treatment and show the effect of uh, this medication, show the effect, side effect, and everything related to that medication. So uh, for this medication, the supposed or suggested dose is 200 milligram as single dose on day one, followed by 100 milligram once daily for total duration of five to 10 days. But unfortunately, there's no safety and efficacy data up to now. So that medication, as I said from the beginning, it is still under refrigeration and there's no uh, safety uh, data regarding this medication. The second medication is Favibiravir, which is uh, a new medication as well, antiviral medication. It's uh, approved in, in Japan to be used as a, a medication for influenza. It is experimental antiviral drug, and uh, it's uh, used to inhibit that uh, the RNA polymerase uh, in the virus. It is approved in China in February 17, 2020, to treat the uh, COVID-19, but unfortunately, this medication is teratogenic and shouldn't be used for in pregnancy. And this medication has uh, some traces of, some concentration of this medication was found in the sperm. So the patient who was using this medication should have effective contraceptive and uh, should use that contraceptive for at least seven days after the therapy. And for the pharmacist and doctor, this patient should be monitored for GIT uh, side effect and LFT elevation and neutropenia. La third medication, robinavir and rotonavir, which is known as Calitra. It is a protease inhibitor. It is used as antiviral in, in HIV uh, treatment. This medication has some effect against COVID-19 and, and some uh, retrospective studies. But another study said this medication is not that effective to treat uh, COVID-19. So still there is a lot of studies with and against the treatment of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, Calitra and treatment of COVID. Some, some, some data came from treatment of SARS and MERS. That's com uh, that combination of Calitra with Ribavirin is effective in treatment of uh, 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 COVID-19 as well, but still is not fully known or confirmed that it is uh, really effective. But some studies said that Calitra alone is not effective in treating uh, 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 COVID-19 and should be in combination with at least Ribavirin. 
the suggested dose in COVID-19, lubinavir and lubinavir 500 milligram twice daily for two weeks. This medication, uh, the patient who is taking the medication, the, the pharmacist should be aware that this medication may has GIT uh, side effects. And uh, uh, this medication has a lot of drug drug interaction because the medication is cytochrome 3A inhibitor. And that's why the, uh, the patient should be monitored for LFT elevation, fatigue, rash, neurological disturbance. The second group of treatment is anti-malaria. Some, some pharmacists and some health providers said, why that anti-malaria is used to treat viral infection? Because this medication has some viral activities in some condition. And this, this, this medication was used not only for anti-malaria, it was used for another treatment as well, like rheumatoid arthritis and other, uh, and other conditions. That's why after investigation, they found that this medication has some activities uh, against, uh, against the viral infection. But up to now, same as the other medication, there is no strong data to support all of these. And that COVID-19 can be treated by hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine. What's chloroquine? Chloroquine is anti-malarial agent, which is hemobulmyrase inhibitor. It has some activity in vitro. And after trial, they found they may have some, may cause some improvement with the patient with uh, COVID-19. But as I said, still the thing is new. I need more investigation. That medica that you, this medication was used in China, and still there's a lot of study going on to support the, uh, uh, the use of antimalarial chloroquine in uh, uh, COVID-19. The suggested dose is 500 milligram orally, twice daily for at least 10 days, five to 10 days. As I said, how antimalarial used to treat viral? Yeah, there is a lot of suggested mechanism that maybe that uh, chloroquine work to uh, to suppress or to inhibit the viral infection. One of these here that the process that inhibition of viral enzyme or process such as viral DNA and RNA polymerase or inhibition of viral protein glycosylation or viral assembly or new viral particle transport and release. But there's another suggestion said that another mechanism of action may, may is the, the one of a chloroquine effect against a COVID or viral infection. That's by inhibition of uh, S2, cellular, uh, S2, S2 receptor, that by interfere with the cellular receptor S, that may uh, uh, reduce that uh, um, the entrance of COVID-19 virus into the cell. And there's another, so theory said that acidification of the surface of the cell membrane that inhibit the fusion of the virus inside uh, uh, the cell. And there is another theory said immune modeling effect of uh, chloroquine, uh, which is affect the cytokine, cytokine release. This medication has uh, some safety concern because it may cause QT prolongation, so it should be taken with care with a patient, cardiac patient, especially with arrhythmia. And this medication cannot be used with a patient with G6PD and has a lot of uh, drug drug interaction. So the pharmacist should be aware of this and should check uh, the interaction with other medication. Because as we mentioned earlier, uh, the patient who is at risk of uh, COVID 19 is the patient with older age and the patient with uh, 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 comorbidity. That's why the patient will have a lot of medication all together and uh, may have uh, some uh, significant drug drug interaction. And some patient has on, on the risk of retinal damage, especially with long term use of uh, uh, chloroquine. And it should be used with caution patient with diabetes as well. The second medication, anti malaria, it is hydroxychloroquine, which is analog of chloroquine. Mostly they are uh, mostly the same and have the same effect, but Hydroxychloroquine is safer than uh, uh, chloroquine, and mostly they have the same uh, 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 effect. And this medication, as I said, I mentioned in the beginning, can be used and useful in rheumatoid arthritis, lobus, and prophylaxis cutaneous tardum. And uh, uh, the mechanism of action, 
mostly same as uh, uh, chloroquine with some difference. And uh, most of the, of the guidelines use hydroxychloroquine once the chloroquine cannot be used. The suggested dose of uh, hydroxychloroquine start with 400 milligram orally twice for one day as a loading dose, then followed by 200 milligram twice daily for another four days, total of five days. Safety, same as chloroquine, they have some uh, concern, but it is less affecting G6BD and can, can, some studies said it can be used with G6BD, but with caution and monitoring. And it's same as that has GIT uh, uh, problem, and, but can be avoided. And as interaction and um, QT interval elongation as well. So we should be careful when you use it with medication, which can which use, uh, which cause QT prolongation uh, like mucolide and other medications. And we should monitor uh, dermatology side effects such as rash and bronchitis, which is may affect some problem in the uh, liver. And as I said, there's some uh, should monitor some hematological side effects such as bone marrow suppression, and other same as chloroquine as well. There's a question widely we heard every day that can we use chloroquine 400 milligram or hydroxychloroquine as prophylaxis once a week? This theory came from some countries because this medication is used as a prophylaxis in malaria. Uh, 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 the patient who want to go to malaria's country. But actually, same as the treatment, there's no strong evidence said that can be used. But there is a lot of study going on now to, to clarify, is it possible to use it for healthcare provider or not? And one of the studies that studies titled as both exposure prophylaxis for SARS-CoV-19, COVID COVID, coronavirus too. And now the, the third group of treatment, which is antimicrobial, uh, the treatment is macrolide, which is erythromycin, it is macrolide antibacterial, and it is used uh, 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 be, uh, to treat that, uh, to prevent the bacterial superinfection. And it may have immune modality, modality properties to work at adjunct therapy with other uh, treatment, which is antimalarial anti antivirus. Macrolide, as we know, this is an old medication used for a long time, mostly for uh, uh, has has immune modulatory properties in pulmonary inflammatory disorder. This may down regulatory inflammatory response and reduce the excessive cytokine production associated with respiratory viral infection. However, as I said, it is it doesn't have any viral uh, effect up to now. And it, it's work as uh, 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 in different mechanism like inhibiting cytokine, inhibition of mucus hypersecretion, decrease production of reactive oxygen species, accelerate neurophil uh, apoptosis, and blocking the activities, activation of nuclear nuclear uh, transcription factors. Evidence, it is efficacy. There's a lot of studies that say that use erythromycin with, with, with hydroxychloroquine may have better effect than using its medication alone. But this study was weak and it's only has low sample size. But the, the, the work is still, and there's a lot of study said erythromycin can be used with uh, this medication to, uh, to prevent that super infection. Safety concern, um, uh, azithromycin can cause QT prolongation, so it should be used uh, in caution with the patient with cardiac and arrhythmia, especially if the patient is using chloroquine or chloroquine, because both of them may uh, increase the QT prolongation, so it should be used with caution with this medication, and monitor the QT interval every day. So if it is more than 500, we should stop the medication. And this medication has significant drug-drug interaction. So the pharmacist should be aware about this drug-drug uh, interaction. Last medication, ascorbic acid, which is used as a supportive therapy. 
And uh, as we know, it is uh, vitamin, which it has used as a cofactor and, and antioxidant. And there's uh, a lot of, uh, of study said this medication is effective to use in, with sepsis. And there's limited, limited evidence that uh, uh, ascorbic acid is uh, effective and beneficial in COVID-19. But still, it is within the guideline and can be used. And uh, I said that no high quality evidence to support ascorbic acid in viral uh, pneumonia. Now, up to now, the suggested dose is 1.5 gram IV every six hours. But there's a new study going on in China that ascorbic acid can be used as, uh, up to 12 gram per day. The study is going to be released in September uh, 20. A20. That's all. Thank you. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Pharmacist Ahmed, for this very informative presentation. I think there is definitely an advantage of this crisis, which is getting such high caliber presentations from the comfort of our home although it does feel weird talking to my mobile phone. But anyway, it is indeed imperative at this time to constantly update with the different types of treatment due to the nature of the virus and how new it is. And now it's time for uh, the questions. So if you have any questions, just write them in the Q&A section and Farmer Ahmed will try to answer them. Uh, the floor is yours, Farmer Ahmed. Okay. Here we have a question that if the patient recover from the virus, does he become immune to it? No, no, because some, some patients in China, uh, after, after, after they treated from uh, uh, COVID-19, the, the, the disease came back again. So up to now, there is no immunity against uh, COVID-19. Another question said, what's the advantage of chloroquine over hydroxychloroquine? Uh, uh, because, see, some cases, some condition, cannot use uh, chloroquine, such as G6BD. And, uh, uh, and if, you, if you want in details, you can go through one by one. Uh, chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine. Hydroxychloroquine is analog of chloroquine, mostly similar, but in some safety concerns, there are some uh, difference between them. Uh, is tocolizumab effective against COVID? There is uh, some, some studies said yes, and some guidelines uh, support that one. But still, as I, I mentioned, still the, uh, the studies for all the indication is still not hardly or strong against uh, to, to confirm that indication is the one to treat COVID or not. And most of this, of most of this uh, studies are in vitro and use uh, in some cases in China and US and in Europe. But it still is not uh, uh, strong evidence. If the patient, if the patient is ordering hydroxychloroquine of arthritis particularly against COVID, this is what I, I mentioned. There is no strong evidence that it can be can can be as prophylaxis from COVID. There is some study, but still not strong, not that strong. It will be protected because I, I mentioned this medication. This disease is still new, and nobody can say this is confirm can be protected or, which is, or the patient is protected if he's on hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine. Because if it's chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, it's not, there's no strong evidence it is the medication to be used for COVID alone. Uh, what's the difference between COVID-19 and other type of corona? Uh, this is uh, coronavirus virus, it's a group of, of virus, uh, and there's uh, many different between them, but uh, here we are speaking about the medication, so I can't answer. Any vaccine, vaccination for COVID-19? No, 
up to now there is no vaccination for COVID-19. How can Oman Pharmacist Society help during COVID-19 uh, outbreak? Yes, for, for Oman Society, for Oman Pharmacist Society, we have started from the beginning of COVID-19 uh, uh, in Oman. We start with uh, uh, a small feed unit which is distributed along, uh, distributed, uh, in Oman, uh, uh, educating the pharmacist, educating the health provider, and even the people. This is the virus, don't use that and use that. Don't go to the, to the fake information. This is the information from official and uh, expert people in Oman, Oman Food Society. And now we are uh, planning to have a volunteer and uh, uh, which they are willing to use, uh, to, to, to work with us. And if that's uh, uh, even suggesting the videos, if they want to work as a volunteer, there's now uh, we are planning for a program I will be uh, uh, distributed soon in the Oman Society uh, website. I think it is enough because there is a lot of. I think, yeah, I think we have reached uh, we have reached the limit here. So uh, yeah. again, thank you very much, uh, and thank you to the participants. We are overwhelmed by the number of participants. Uh, we really appreciate making the time to come and uh, attend our uh, webinar. And uh, of course, this is not going to be the last one. We have, no, I think, well, the days are going to be released really soon, but uh, there will be a presentation about the therapeutic drug options for pediatric patients with suspected or confirmed COVID-19 infection, which is going to be delivered by uh, pharmacist Zahra Lawati. And uh, just stay tuned for the dates, and uh, we'll see you later. See you. Take care.